Hi guys! For this first chapter Friday, I have Lifeboat 12. This is a book that is on the Charlie Mae Simon reading list, and you can check it out using your Cal's Tech card. Remember, if you need a Cal's Tech card or you need help using your Cal's Tech card, you can give me a holler. My phone number is 447 7106. That's a 501 prefix on that. Or you can email me at Kelly, K E L L Y, dot Chaney, C H A N E Y, at LRSD.org. Or you can give me a message through Schoology. Or you can send me a message through Dojo. So, no excuse for not getting hold of me. This book on the back tells you a little bit about it, but I'm going to read you the first chapter. Summer 1940. So, in other words, this is right about the time World War II really got to going. The envelope. I shouldn't do it. I know I shouldn't. I'll be in trouble if I open the large envelope addressed to my parents, but it's stamped on His Majesty's service. It's not like every day a family like mine gets a letter from the king. Hmm. So if they got a letter from the king, that kind of tells us that this story starts out in Great Britain where there's a king. The clock tick, tick, ticks. I glance down the hall to make sure I'm alone. I slide my finger under the flap of the envelope. I open it, I peek inside. Here's what it says. Dear sir, or madame, I am directed by the children's overseas reception scheme. It's nothing, a dull form letter, but, but wait, someone has written my name. Your preliminary application has been considered by the board and they have decided that Kenneth J. Sparks is suitable for being sent to Canada. What are you doing? cries my stepmother, seizing the letter from my hands. That's not addressed to you. Charles, Charles, that cheeky son of yours wants a good clout about the ears. Cheeky means smart alecky, and a clout about the ears means, oh, she's going to pop you upside the head. That letter is about me, I say. You're sending me away. I glare up at my father, who appears in the doorway. My stepmother finally got her wish to get rid of me. Ken, let me explain, says Dad. That letter could save your life. They sit me down, and I shrug their hands off my shoulders and stare at the floor, heart slamming, heat rising. They talk and talk, voices just swirling in the air, rising and falling, overlapping, interrupting, weaving a net, a trap. But I'm not going to fall for it. I try to block them out. I concentrate on slowing the storm in my head that says, they're sending me away, they're sending me away. But hang on, what is that about great Germans? The Germans are coming, says Dad. France has surrendered. And the Nazis are gunning to come to England next. Hundreds of thousands of parents applied to have their kids sent out of harm's way. You're lucky to have been selected, says my stepmother. I have a sister in Edmonton, Canada, and with your father out of work, money is tight. You can live with her. And we can rent out your room to help us pay for the rations, which are getting more and more expensive every day. Just think, says my dad, you'll be sailing on a ship. It'll be an adventure. You'll make your way in the world. And you can get your head out of those books. My books? My stories of buccaneers and buried gold, cowboys, braves, and days of old. I snort. Most parents would have been excited to have a kid that loves to read. I read them because they take me away far from where I'm living. My three-year-old sister toddles over and puts her head on my knee. I play with her curls and say, but what about Margaret? Shouldn't she go too? She's too young, says my stepmother. Only ages five through 15 are allowed. At 13, I may be one of the oldest kids. 
No adults, I ask? Parents can't go, says my dad, but you'll have escorts, a whole staff of doctors and nurses, teachers and priests who are volunteering to help kids get to Canada. Yes, son, you're one of the lucky ones. You leave in September. You mustn't tell your friends, says dad, because loose lips sink ships, you know. And there will be a new overcoat for you, says my stepmother, as if that clinches the deal. I squint up at her and think, I'm as good as gone and I run from the house. So it sounds like he doesn't really want to have this adventure. He's fine with reading books about adventure, but now he has an opportunity to actually take an adventure and he's not really excited about it because it will take him away from his family. From the title, Lifeboat 12, you can kind of think, hmm, all may not go as well as he hopes. So, Lifeboat 12 by Susan Hood, a Charlie Mae Simon Award nominee. Be sure and read the rest of the book and see what happens during this wonderful novel set in World War II.